Another thing that we need to recognize is when expressions are almost exactly the same, but something is a little bit off. So our first example, a minus b and b minus a, those things are opposites. They're almost exactly the same, but what's different? a is positive over here, but negative over here. And b is negative over here and positive over here. So they're opposites of each other. So that means if I take one of them, one of those expressions, and multiply it by negative 1, I get the other one out and vice versa. So just to show you that it's true. If I take a minus b, my first expression, and multiply it by a negative, this one comes out. So what are we looking at? Negative a, and I've got a negative times a negative, it'll give me a positive b. And we know addition is commutative, the order doesn't matter, so I can flip that around. And again, we get that second expression. They are opposites. I can multiply by negative and get out the other expression. So down here, we're looking at negative b and positive a. Again, can flip it around since it's commutative, and we do indeed get the first expression back out. So let's take an example and see if we can notice those patterns. So these are pretty darn close. We have the same factors involved, top and bottom. But up here, x is positive. Down there, x is negative. Down here, positive. Up there, negative. So they're opposites of each other. So it doesn't matter which uh, numerator and denominator I factor out a negative. Whichever one you're comfortable with. I'm going to take it from the one down below because I like to see x written first here. So if I take a negative out of my denominator, what do I have now? Negative 4 and positive x. And you might be like, well, they don't look exactly the same because we need to reorder it for that to happen. If you can recognize it now, we can cancel it out, but we can always change the order since addition is commutative. So now that I switched the order around here, we can look common between the top and the bottom. That matches exactly. We can take out that factor, x minus 4, x minus 4. So what do I have left up top? Same thing divided by the same thing is 1. Same thing divided by the same thing is still 1, but I have that negative out front. So what is 1 divided by negative 1? Negative 1. Simplified as far as we could go. So after we multiply something together, like we were working on in the last video, we need to leave it in factored form. Because then we can recognize maybe we have opposites that we can cancel out. Or there are still more factors that they share in common. So we should leave the numerator and the denominator in factored form. You might be tempted when you get to the end to multiply what's left together, but it's just better practice to leave it in factored form so we can look a little bit closer, see if there's anything still in common. So let's work on a few combining all of this now. First example, we only have, you know, singular expressions or things all being multiplied together. So we don't need to group together what comes together. But later on, we're going to need to, since we have sums and differences. But up here, we don't need parentheses. So let's multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Multiplication is commutative, so I can change that order around as I please. And let's break down these factors. I've got the common 5, so I'll leave that. And I've got a 2 up top and a 4 down below. So I know that I can break up 4 into 2 times 2. Okay, and if it's helpful to write out those factors, we can. And let's look at our variables. Now we've already dealt with those exponent laws. When I've got the same base and division, I subtract the exponents. But let's say we forget. What can we always do? Write out all of the factors. And we can look common between the top and the bottom that we can cancel out of both. So sometimes it's helpful to break it down into all of its factors that are prime. So let's take a peek. Same thing divided by the same thing. What else can we cancel out? 
2 divided by 2 is 1, and the a divided by a is 1. So what are we left with up top? I've got a squared, two factors being multiplied together, and down below, all I have left is a 2. And we can look, anything else in common that we can take out here, cancel out? Nope. As far as we can go. So the next, again, grouping together what comes together whenever we have a sum or a difference involved. So I know that piece is acting as its own entity. I'm going to have to distribute or FOIL in order to get rid of all these parentheses. So multiplying straight across the top, we have these factors. Straight across the bottom, we have those same factors. So we need to break up this trinomial here to see if we can cancel with anything down below. So let's try and factor the top. So I've got a 1 on the front, and I know that my signs are going to be positive. And I need two factors of 9, multiplying to 9, adding to 6. So we need 3 and 3. So this was a perfect square trinomial. And we multiplied straight across the top again, so I have a factor x minus 2. And what do we have down below? Straight across the bottom. x minus 4 and x plus 3. So now that we have multiplication everywhere, all of those different chunks, we can look. Common between the top and the bottom that we can take out of both. x plus 3, x plus 3. Does anything else match exactly? No, so we're done there. And we need these parentheses up top because we still are multiplying two expressions with some or a difference together. We would have to FOIL it out in order to get rid of them. But down below, we don't need those parentheses because on the outside, we're just multiplying by 1. So we'll do one more before you try some. So looking up top, again, group together what comes together. Anything that has a sum or a difference involved, we need parentheses around. 15 and 2, they don't need them. If you want to put them in, go for it. But it's not necessary. So let's try to factor this guy up top. I've got an x and an x, and 2 is prime. So I've got 2 and 1 involved. And I need my larger term to be positive, so that when I add them, I get a positive 1 in the middle. And as we multiply straight across the top, we broke up this factor, but we're also multiplying by 2. And down below, I've got 15, and I need to break up this trinomial. So again, 2 and 1 are prime. And what about these signs? Multiplying to give me a positive, and adding to give me a negative. So that tells me what about these? They both need to be negative. And we can double check. So I've got negative 2 and negative 1. I get my negative 3. And negative times a negative gives us a positive. So let's look, since everything is being multiplied, what do they share in common, top and bottom, that we can cancel out? So that entire factor, x minus 1, they share in common. These ones don't match exactly, and 2 and 15 don't have any factors. So what are we left with? 2 times x plus 2, and 15 times 2x minus 1. We always want to look in the end, check and make sure we can't break it down any farther. All right, so take these last two, break them down as far as you can. So as we look at part A, we need to factor this trinomial up top. So when we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, it's helpful. Group together what comes together. And how do we factor this thing up top? I've got a coefficient of 1, so I know it's going to be an x and an x. And I need it to multiply to give me a positive, but add to give me a negative. So both of these are going to have to be negative. And what factors do we need? 2 and 2. But again, multiplying straight across the top, what are we getting? Took care of this factor, but I'm also multiplying by x plus 3. And down below, how does this one factor? It's a difference of squares. And again, straight across the bottom, we also have x minus 2. So looking, common up top and down below, what can we get rid of? 
one factor of x minus 2 and one factor of x plus 3. So we're left with x minus 2 over x minus 3. We want to look at the n. Can we go any farther or have we taken out everything that's common? Taken out everything. And for part b, the very last one again, group together what comes together. And let's start to factor, break this down. This first binomial is a difference of squares. Breaks into x plus 5, x minus 5. And what else are we multiplying by up top? 3. Down below, I have a 6. And up top, I have a 3. So I can break that up into 2 and 3. And I still am multiplying by that entire factor, x plus 5. So what's canceling? Common up top and down below, we can get rid of x plus 5. We can also get rid of a factor of 3. And what are we left with up top? x minus 5, and down below we're left with 2. And we should always check at the end. Can we go any farther? Can we take anything out? No.